Welcome to our review on controlling reproduction. First thing to know then is when we talk about contraception, what do we mean? And quite simply, contraception is just a technique that's used to prevent pregnancy. And these can be split up into two groups. You've got hormonal contraceptives, which use hormones to disrupt the normal female reproductive cycle. And we've got the non-hormonal contraceptives, which are barrier methods that are going to prevent the sperm from reaching the egg or physical devices that are going to release chemical compounds like spermicides, which kill sperm or chemicals that are going to prevent the egg from implanting within the uterus. So the first technique of contraception we're going to have a look at are condoms. So these are non hormonal and all they're going to do is act as a barrier. So two types on the left, you've obviously got the male condom on the right is a female condom. It's not just a weird bag. Now, what we're going to do is the male condom is the one that's placed over the penis and the female condom is placed inside the vagina. And the whole purpose is to prevent the sperm actually getting into the vagina themselves. Not only will this help to prevent pregnancy, but it also helps to prevent the spread of sexually transmitted infections. So something that you should be using whenever you have sex, obviously, unless you plan to have a baby at the end of it. The next type of contraceptive device is the diaphragm or cervical cap. Again, this is a non hormonal contraceptive device and it's inserted into the vagina to cover the cervix. The whole idea behind that is to prevent the sperm from entering the uterus, because if the sperm can't get into the uterus, they can't fertilize an egg. You do have to remove this six or more hours following sexual intercourse because it can't just stay in there forever. Now, what we need to also find is that it's not effective unless it's used with a spermicide. Now, a spermicide is just a chemical that kills sperm, as the name suggests. So just on its own, it's not going to do anything. But if you use the spermicide as well, it's a good enough barrier to then allow the spermicide to kill the sperm before you can remove them. Third type of contraceptive is the intrauterine device or IUD. Um, some of you might have heard of it referred to as the coil. So again, this is a non hormonal barrier method and it's inserted into the uterus because what it then does is it releases copper. Now, the copper actually prevents the sperm from surviving in the uterus and the fallopian tubes. So it's also going to prevent the implantation of any fertilized ovums. This is going to remain effective for five to ten years, at which point it'll then need to be removed. So I've given you a little picture on the left hand side to give you an idea of the size in someone's hand there. And then to show you how it's actually implanted in a uterus at the bottom there. Next potential contraceptive technique is the pill. So we've got the oestrogen and progesterone pill known as the combined pill. So as the name suggests, it is a hormonal technique. So the whole idea of this is it's going to prevent ovulation. So it thickens the mucus from the cervix, stopping sperm from actually reaching an ovum. And it's going to prevent the implantation of a fertilized egg into the uterus wall. So what happens here is it's taken daily for 21 days for the menstrual cycle, then it's stopped to allow the lining to break down naturally. Another type of pill that could be taken is the progesterone pill. And again, this is hormonal and its whole purpose is to thicken the mucus from the cervix, which stops the sperm from reaching the ovum. It's also going to thin the lining of the uterus to prevent implantation, and it can also prevent ovulation. Downside to this one is it's got to be taken around the same time every day. So for those women that are a little bit forgetful about when to take pills, certainly not a good choice. The last contraceptive technique we're going to look at is the intrauterine system or IUS. So this is again a little coil, as you can see in the bottom left there, but this time it's a hormonal coil. So we insert it into the uterus just like previously, and it has the same effect as the progesterone only pill. Good thing about this, though, is it is going to remain effective for between three and five years. The last thing we need to consider is basically how effective these different techniques actually are. 
And one thing to bear in mind is that no form of contraception is 100% effective. The way that we do measure their effectiveness is as a percentage of effectiveness per year. So that's going to predict how many women per 100 each year are going to have pregnancy prevented. So if we look at the little table on the right there, you can see the male condom has an effectiveness of 98%. That means that every 100 women each year that use a condom, then in 98% of them, so 98 women, then they will not have a pregnancy as a result. Two, however, will. The female condom, you can see that drops to 95%. The diaphragm and cap, that goes down between 92 to 96, depending on how it's used. The IUD, oestrogen and progesterone pill, progesterone only pill and the IUS, those are all over 99% effective. So if we're asked to actually evaluate which of these is best, then obviously the one that has the highest effectiveness is the better option. So any of the bottom four there because they're all over 99% because it means that less than one woman out of every hundred per year end up pregnant when they didn't intend to be. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now state some examples of contraception, explain how hormones are used in it, and also evaluate different methods of contraception.